This is G47 for zero point fuel. Uh, for our members, I wanted to show you the jig that I have for winding coils. I'm going to make this video relatively short. I'm going to eliminate a lot of the uh, pauses and winding in the video. I promise to try and keep the ahs and the hums down to a minimum. Finish cutting all the cores and I'm getting ready to uh, excuse me wind my my course this is what they look like before I take them apart just like a technomancer you need to take these off when you get ready to wind them uh, one little note just for me I'm just uh, funny about these things I went ahead and put some white tape on the on these screws here I didn't want anything coming back um, up into the, the coil when I put the control board on this side power shorts or anything like that so I'm just funny about you know th things like that so I put tape on the screws that are going to be pointing up to the back of the uh, control board that's the front side right there I got these ready to go this one is ready to be mounted on the jig I've taken the the, the end caps off I've left this portion of the template on there because I need to put um, some connectors on here. I, I want to make sure I don't lose my positioning on where they go. This will come off after I put the connectors back on. So let's talk about the jig. Uh, scraps again, didn't throw anything away. I'm just going to go through one of these pieces, mount the core, and then start the wind. I'll stop the video, and then I'll catch you on the back end when I'm done with the wind. So, let me just go through the parts real quick. These, everything came from the local uh, hardware store, Home Depot. Scrap wood, hole there where the wire will come through. Make sure you can get that. Um, I labeled uh, this, um, there, there we go again. This hole here for the, uh, where the wire come out. This is an electrical plate that I, I got from the electrical department. This part here, let me get rid of this, is simply, I believe, a one inch tubing from the plumbing department for sprinkler head risers. This is a Toro head sprinkler head riser. I only needed the cap. A couple of washers to let the coil spin. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let me put this back together real quick and I'm going to mount one side of the coil so what I'm going to do is take this off and mount the coil really quick give me one second here so. Jig took about maybe an hour to make. I have to tell you, the hardest part about this whole project is probably making the jigs. Once you have the jigs, you're pretty much off to the races. And now that I've had to make more coils, you know, it's just a matter of pulling out the jig and getting it up and running. So the orange hole here is lined up with the hole that the wire is going to go through. I'm going to mount the other side and be right back and mount it on the jig. All right, so I'm back. Core is mounted. The screw heads are on the inside, so as I'm doing the winding, it doesn't get in my way. I am right-handed, so this mount will go where the hole comes in through here, the wire will go to my left because I wind with my right. The electrical plates, I had to notch out in a corner here but this is before the template was made five inches. You may be able to get away without having to cut these notches now that the template is 
uh, five inches. As a matter of fact, you can see there's plenty of room there now. You can probably get away with maybe just cutting the, the, the corners off. Basically, just screwed them down to these wooden blocks, and we're going to mount this up. So, the advantage of it being on this Toro sprinkler head riser, or sprinkler head riser pipe, is that you just screw it in like this, come in on the other side, oops, apologize, wind this up like this, on both sides, and now we have a free-flowing coil jig winder. To keep the jig from moving on me, very similar to the other one, just going to clamp it down with some, uh, a couple of these clamps. Keeps it pretty firm. And we're ready to do some windings. My wire is ready to go. Already tested them for continuity. Make sure nothing's popped. It, it would suck to have to do the winding for however long it takes and find out you have a popped wire and then have to dismantle it and chuck it or whatever it is you might want to do with the wire. So time now is almost noon, sunny South Florida. And what I'm gonna do is shut the video down. I'll start I'll start the wind. Um, what I'll do is I'll feed it here through the first hole, shut the video down, and I'll come back to see how long it takes. I will be using Set of gloves, this thing, could, as Technomancer said, is brutal on your hands. It pretty much is. I'm going to lay down the wire here in the garage and get this uh, coil uh, loaded up. So, I'll be back. Alright guys, we're back for just one more minute before I get going on the winding. One of the things I wanted to point out, I almost forgot. Part of the jig arsenal, I have this uh, HDPE piece of plastic. As a matter of fact, it's the same material that I'm using for the end caps. Techno answer was right. Getting the wire laid in and positioned just right is a pain. So I made this pencil-like tool. It's uh, rounded on the edge so it doesn't nick the wire. And when I need to get in there and move the wire over and nudge it a little bit or squeeze them together, I pretty much use this to get in there so I can get the wire going. So, going. so we're going to do one wind. We're going to then actually stop the video and then I'll be back however long it takes. So as you can see it flows pretty easy. It actually, I like the uh, Toro sprinkler head connectors because what it does is it, it keeps a firm grip on the on the wood that's spinning with the, with the core on it. Every once in a while I still got to tighten it up by hand and I am it's a little bit too tight. There we go. So I'm off. So we're going to come back and I'll let you know how long it takes to finish this wine. Uh, I like to share the timings. Just kind of gives you an idea how long it takes to wind your cores when you're, when you're getting ready to do yours. So you can have an idea how long it would take to do 6 or 12 or whatever it is you're doing. Thanks. Be right back. Hey folks, I'm back. Not done yet. Probably got another 15 feet on the wind. But I wanted to get a couple of minutes in on the video on this part of the wind. I'm at the end. Uh, Technomancer was right. When you're on the ends and you're trying to get the wire tucked in, this tool really comes in handy. The... Uh, HDP tool. Like I said, it's got a blunt tip. Oops, let me get that in there. And it works pretty well to move things out of the way. Do not use a screwdriver. You're just going to nick your wire. And when you go to do your next continuity test after it's wound, you may find you have a popped wire. And that would be a lot of time and copper thrown down the tubes. Because you really won't be able to use it for anything else. So I'm just trying to jam this thing in here like this. Just make sure I can get it in there on the ends. So I've been pretty lucky. The, the tool doesn't hasn't nicked any of my wires or anything like that. At least when I go to do the continuity test at the end. At least not yet anyway. What I'll do is I'll finish this end wind right here. 
I have this third airway clamp or this clamp. Sometimes I need to take a quick break or step away. I'll just clamp it down. That way it doesn't uh, you know, unwind on me or anything like that. It actually puts a little pressure on the wine on the on the copper. Kind of scrunches it down a little bit. It makes for a more compact, more compact wind. So it actually helps a lot. And because the clamps have that rubber tips on them, um, it doesn't get in the way of the, um, it, it won't nick the wire. So let me get this in here and I won't bore you with the rest of the wine. And like I said earlier, I'll come back. All right, so it looks like it's turning and starting to come back the other way. Time, I'm back, 12.40, 40 minutes for the wine. Mind you, I'm not done. For some reason, my wines aren't coming up exactly clean on the very end like Technomancer does them. I guess maybe because my template is five inches, who knows. So in order to keep the wire from coming loose, I'll wrap it in red tape. I'm going to leave the video camera on. What I'll do is when I edit the video, I'll fast forward through it. So gloves are coming off and we'll go ahead and wind them up in, in red tape. I got a question the other day, why do I have a red wire? It's actually copper wire. Um, I added a little bling to my coil. I just bought it in red instead of, so I can distinguish the smaller gauge wire from the thicker gauge wires. And that's pretty much it, there's no rhyme or reason. So let's dismantle this baby and get it off the jig. And Pretty simple. I'm actually pretty happy with this jig. and pull the wire back through carefully and BAM! You're done. So, I'm going to move the jig out of the way real quick. Oh, just some quick dimensions on the jig in case anybody needs to know. It's about 20 inches wide. The working, the, the little step up towers are about 11 inches. The hole on the sides here are just exactly the same size as the sprinkler head pipe fitting. Nothing rocket scientist about that. And to keep them from opening up, there's a back brace back here. And that's it. Let's move this all out of the way. Pop these clamps off. Take the jig. And let's get the end caps back on. get the end caps. I make markings on my end caps. I know it's a little silly to figure out which one goes where. They go round goes on this end just to put them back where they came from and this one goes on this end. I pop the screws off somewhere and I don't know where they're at. So let me, oh here they are. Bam, end to end, 45 minutes. So 
you're going to wind up spending plus or minus, you get better at it. This is now my eighth coil, something like that. So you, you, you get pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good at it after a while. I'm going to finish putting on these screws back here, and that's it. All right, forum members, hope that helps. At this point, um, next video will probably be the mini control board that I created when I get time. But take no answers on me about finishing up. So, got to get going. This is G47. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. We're out.